Let's go back to Denny. So Max, Erica, and Bob, take each a quick shot at this. Do you see a line drawn back from the language poets to the imagists? Max first. Yeah, I see a line in um, the use of parataxis, or more specifically parataxis as a way of accessing the materiality of language. As Bob was just saying with the Williams poem, there's um, Williams is, is breaking down and recombining words in order to to get at something that goes beyond just the simple meaning of it. And I think we see that too with the language poets I and mean, with the new sentence with this, this um, uh, you know, perhaps on a, on a slightly higher order than the word, maybe, you know, getting up to the order of syntax, right? Like seeing how um, these different units can be uh, separated, recombined in a way to um, get beyond, uh, I would say a semantic meaning and towards something that's more like materiality. Wow, you're saying, I think, Max, that uh, when you encounter something like uh, the Poundian radical condensation of the station of the metro at the Metro poem, uh, the, that radical condensation forces non-syllogistic language where you get a line and then a colon and then another and, in, and then another line and the two don't relate except juxtapositionally. That may have started something that the language poets were very interested in later. Yeah, is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, bringing together these two, uh, yeah, the, as you said, syllogistically, these two uh, images or clauses and, and trying to, to triangulate and allow a yeah. sort of third to emerge. I, I read, Erica and Bob, I read literary historically, I read the language poets as partly a re, an attempt to re-radicalize early modernism. I, I know Bob Perlman has written about that, so more or less. So I'm not in bad company there. Erica, can you quickly draw a line between the images and, and the language poets? I should say for first time mod po people, we're talking about the week eight poets. So we got a ways to go before we get to them. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to build on what Max is saying about parataxis. Um, there also seems to be a line drawn with the, um, the attention to words as individual units. And um, for the imagists, there's, um, you know, Pound's idea of, you know, use absolutely no word that doesn't um, contribute to the poem or to the presentation of the topic of the poem. And I think about um, the impulse of language poetry as, as Al was saying, to kind of re-radicalize the attention to the way that um, words refer to one another, you yes. know, through a disruption of that kind of referentiality. Yes, yes. that's really great. Bob, that's very right. curious sure. to hear what kind of, uh, I don't, it's not, there's nothing that works here as a brief answer, but give it a try. I'll try to be brief. Um, yeah, no, there, there's, um, on the one hand, I think there, there's uh, basic differences in that language writing to generalize about it um, was about experimentation and doing lots of different things with language. Um, and it was expansive in general. I mean, something like the new sentence of a book of say of Ron Silliman's that's you know, 80 pages long of new sentences is, maybe each one sentence is like concise, like an image's poem, but it's putting it all together. So yeah. it's, so that's, that's a, a big difference. So a, a similarity is the sense of uh, imagism thinking about writing that it's 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 something that um that there can be a poetics in fact there, there needs to be a poetics you don't just write you you think about the art and i think that had a big influence yeah definitely oh i love that answer thank you i hope everybody's taking notes